Hello, I'm Rejid Ahmed with BBC World News. Our top story, the full extent of Russia's sport doping scandal is revealed. More than a thousand Russian athletes are found to have benefited from state-sponsored doping. A report says it's corrupted the London Olympic Games on an unprecedented scale. Moscow denies the claim. Yulia Stepanova, who helped expose Russia's doping program, speaks to the BBC about cheating, cover-ups and life on the run. South Korea's parliament has voted to impeach President Park Geun-hye over a corruption scandal. And how a fragment preserved in this piece of amber helps scientists discover a tiny cousin of Tyrannosaurus rex. Hello and welcome. More than a thousand elite Russian athletes benefited from a systematic doping program at global events like the Olympics and Athletics World Championships. That's according to the second part of a report from the World Do Anti-Doping Agency. Richard McLaren, the head of WADA, said the Russian team at the London Olympics had corrupted the games on an unprecedented scale. He said Russian officials had developed ways of ensuring that their athletes didn't get caught. Well, our correspondent Sarah Rainsford has the reaction from Moscow. Sarah Rainsford there, and a bit later we'll be hearing from the former Russian middle distance runner Yulia Stepanova. Well, it took an unprecedented show of people power, hundreds of thousands taking to the streets week after week. But now members of parliament in South Korea have followed public opinion and voted to impeach President Park Geun-hye. She now has to step aside as the head of state while the constitutional court decides whether to remove her permanently from office. In a televised address after the vote, she apologised to voters. Well, the accusation that brought down Park Geun-hye was that she, was al she allowed a friend to use their connection to collect massive donations from South Korean companies. Steve Evans has more. Investigators in India have arrested a former head of the country's Air Force, SP Tiagi, on corruption charges. He's accused of taking bribes from the Italian helicopter company Augusta Westland in return for helping them win a lucrative deal to supply a dozen helicopters to India. The contract was worth $550 million. The former air chief denies any wrongdoing. Well, with me is our South Asia editor, Jill McGivering. Jill, thank you for joining us. First of all, give us a sense of the background of this case, because it's not a well-known one. No, that's right. And these are investigations that have been going on actually for a few years. Uh, there have been various times when, for example, um, Mr. Tiagi's um, premises have been raided by investigators. He's been called in for questioning a few times, but it's been quite a shock today to hear he's actually been arrested. And the investigators are saying they think they have enough evidence now to frame charges. As you say, he denies um, any wrongdoing, but it sounds as though they think they've got a pretty good case against him. How well is uh, Mr. Tiagi known in India? Well, I wouldn't say he's necessarily a, you know, a, a face that's a, a household name and that he's, he's really very well known in that sense, but he was a very senior and important, powerful man. I mean, this is the man that is, is one of the most important figures, the head of the, um, the Air Force, one of the most important figures in the armed forces in one of the, the world's biggest countries. So very important. And, and this is partly why the arrest has caused such surprise that he's such a senior figure, and that in itself is unusual, but also that he's such a senior figure within the armed forces. And generally in India, people tend to look at the civil service and the armed forces as being the people who are pretty clean and pretty efficient in the country, compared with, say, a bit more cynicism sometimes about the elected politicians. So it is unusual then to have a man of this prominence, of this stature, come to the attention of authorities and, and actually arrested over corruption. Absolutely. Yes, it is. I think it's going to cause a lot of surprise. Um, and it's coming at an interesting time. You know, we've got a government in India at the moment that is basically saying it is determined to try and crack down on corruption at all levels. Uh, it's also been rather controversially chasing what they call black money, illegal, uh, ill-gotten gains, um, with that whole issue around the currency crisis that's gone on for the last month. And we know that investigators at the moment are trying very hard to trace the money 
which they believe uh, Mr Tiagi was given in the form of bribes uh, and that's all part of that, that picture. So this is in a way quite helpful to the Prime Minister Narendra Modi at a time when he is saying bear with me at a difficult time because I'm cracking down on corruption and no one is exempt from that fight and here they are arresting someone who is a very senior figure. Now we should say he denies all allegations. Absolutely. How big is this playing in India itself, in Indian media? I'd say very big. I mean, it's only a story that's broken in the last couple of hours, but it's, it's the lead in most of the main newspapers online and also some of the television stations. People are going to be fascinated to see what happens next. We've only got an arrest at this stage. The next thing, of course, would be if charges are actually framed and then a situation where he pleads. Jill McGivering, our Asia editor, thank you very much. Well, in other news, Hong Kong's leader, Si Wai Lung, says that he will not seek re-election when his term ends next July due to family reasons. Mr Lung has been an unpopular leader, with many accusing him of putting Beijing's interests above those of Hong Kong citizens. The president of Ghana, John Mahama, has appealed for calm as votes are counted following Wednesday's tightly fought election. Mr Mahama said he would respect the outcome of the poll, whether it was positive or negative. Some private media are reporting that the main opposition leader has won an absolute majority, but no official results have been declared. Nigeria's military says at least 30 people have been killed in a suspected Islamist attack in Madagali in Adamwa state. An army spokesman said two female suicide bombers blew themselves up in a busy market. Madagali was occupied for several months by the Islamist group Boko Haram. It was retaken by the military last year. Now to Syria, where the UN says it's had reports that hundreds of men and boys have gone missing after crossing into government-controlled West Aleppo. It said there was every reason for concern, given what they say is a terrible record for arbitrary detention in Syria. Meanwhile, the BBC has received a letter from a doctor working for the Red Crescent in Aleppo detailing a harrowing operation to move vulnerable people from an old people's home near the city's front line. You may find some of the images in this report distressing. And coming up, we look back at the life and influence of John Glenn, the first US astronaut to orbit the Earth who died aged 95. This is BBC World News. I'm Regid Ahmed. The latest headlines. More details have been revealed about the Russian sport doping scandal. At least a thousand athletes were involved, the report says, corrupting the London Olympic Games on an unprecedented scale. Well, as we've just been hearing, more than 1,000 Russian athletes, including Olympic medalists, benefited from a state-sponsored doping program between 2011 and 2015. That is according to a new report by the World Anti-Doping Agency. The former Russian middle distance runner Yulia Stepanova helped expose Russia's systematic cheating in elite sport. And as part of our 100 Women series, the 30-year-old, now living in exile in America, has been talking to us about her life and why she exposed the wrongdoing in her native country. Ukrainian police want international help to return a politician to the country who was accused of 100 million euros worth of fraud. Alexander Onyshenka, who is a former Olympian and multi-millionaire, currently spends a lot of his time here in London. He left Ukraine before he could be arrested and he denies all allegations against him and is now claiming he has evidence of corruption at the heart of the Ukrainian government. The government refutes those claims. Tom Burridge has a story. John Glenn, one of the first astronauts in space and the first American to circle the Earth in orbit, has died at the age of 95. Palab Ghosh looks back now at his extraordinary life. The Hollywood actor Kirk Douglas is celebrating his 100th birthday. His career has spanned seven decades and highlights have included three Oscar nominations as well as an Honorary Academy Award in 1996. Douglas is best known for his roles in Spartacus and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Now let's take a look at these stunning pictures before we go. You're looking at a feathery tail perfectly preserved in amber which was found by Chinese scientists in Myanmar. But can you guess what it belongs to. None other than a 99 million year old feathered dinosaur. And this is what scientists think the creature looks like. It's about the size of a sparrow 
and it's thought to be brown on top and white underneath. And this is the first discovery of dinosaur material preserved in amber and will go a long way into revealing more about the development of modern feathers, not to mention shedding light on the extinct species that dominated Earth for more than 160 million years. That's it for me. Much more on our website, bbc.com forward slash news. You can get in touch with me on Twitter. I'm at Regid Ahmed. See you soon.